This is the day which the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 118, 24. Welcome to the More Than Conqueror's Life Center Sunday School with Sister Tracy. The lesson title, Chorus Rebellion. The lesson text, Numbers chapter 16, verses 1 through 14. Now Korah the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Elab, and on the sons of Pelah, sons of Reuben took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his, and who is his holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do take your censors, Korah, and all his company. And put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel have separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he hath brought thee near to him and all thy brother and thy sons of Levi with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord, and, with is, and what is Aaron, that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Elab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey, to kill us in the wilderness, except thou makest thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. <clears throat> the lesson discussion, obedience, is key. So in today's lesson, Korah and Dathan led a rebellion against Moses. Their actions were not warranted simply because God made Moses the leader. And during that time, there were two tribes that supported these rebellious actions, and they were the Reubenites and the Kohathites. The rebels accused Moses and Aaron of going too far in ex, uh, asserting their uh, authority. And oftentimes, there's no reasoning with people who are set on rebellion, but we must make an attempt to help them see their error. And that's exactly what Moses did by falling to his face before them, not to suggest his surrender to them, but humbling himself before God. And it is a difficult task to swallow pride uh, for the greater cause of Christ, sometimes when you stand falsely accused. And it is downright offensive, usually when you're falsely accused. However, if you love the Lord, you will allow him to provide the defense for you. And your reaction in situations like this should be a proper response to Christ, not emotionally tied uh, to your reaction that dishonors God. So Moses' defense for himself was absolutely none, for he trusted God to handle this entire situation. He was confident in his leadership status, for it was God who assigned it to him. In addition, 
Moses humbling himself. He advised Korah and his men to take censers with fire and take them before the Lord. That was symbolized a religious purification for a willing party anyway. Now, you would think Korah in this time uh, would have been willing uh, to just, you know, surrender and, you know, understand that it was God that had placed Moses as his leader. After all, he was already privileged to be a part of God's camp. But nevertheless, him and his people, they continued to, uh, they just continued their rebellious grumbles due to their anger and jealousy of Aaron being chosen to be the priest and, in addition, his bloodline. Dathan and Abram added insult to injury by suggesting that Moses led them out of the land flowing with milk and honey, meaning they were talking about cruel Egypt. They were saying that was the land of milk and honey? Like, how dare they? But when people look back or simply return into their bondage or into darkness after being delivered, they tend to be deceived and feel as if whatever God delivered them from is somehow a better option than the love and freedom in Christ. In other words, they were too far gone. Words that they used on Moses, it's needless to say. They use those same words with Moses, uh, but it's needless to say how this whole situation will end. And we'll find that out in next week's lesson. So in the meantime, make loving the Lord and keeping his statues your top priority. Obedience is better than a sacrifice as we discover in this lesson. Thank you so much for joining the More Than Conqueror Sunday School. God bless you. Jalen, Victoria, Skylar, Jermaine, Zaniah, Leroy, Timothy, Nevaeh, Grant, Faith, CJ, Noel, Taylor, Tyler, DeMarco, Erica, Moya, Grace, India, and our guests, Anthony, Summer, Azaria, Anthony and Jaden, and in our collegiate corner, blessings to Selena, India, and Gabby. And in our prayer corner, continue to pray for our pastor, our first lady and her mother, Evangelist Mercy's mother, uh, Brother Jalen, Mother Sweeting, Sister Patricia's daughter, and her brother, Mother Woods, Sister Aileen, Sister Shanisa's grandpa, Sister Rodriguez, sons daniel and elijah and the entire church body and the world god bless you and keep you